Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel of Bethel Evangelical Free Church Hanley. I'm Pastor Drew Hayes Charmy. This is another historic church in Worcestershire. This is the church of St. Mary Magdalene, Broadwells, in the Lower Team Valley. It's a, a Norman building. <coughs> you can see it's quite a simple structure. Although the chancel and nave are architecturally separate, structurally separate, nevertheless, you've just got this uninterrupted view. There is a Lady Chapel off on the side over here. It's a 14th century addition. The church was restored in 1885 by the architect Charles Hodgson Fowler, who's architect to Durham Cathedral. What was he doing down here in Worcestershire? Well, it's a very simple answer. His brother was the rector. And if your brother is an architect and you're you feel your church needs to be restored, well, keep it in the family and make sure that your brother gets the commission. And in those days, you could do that. I mean, the rector was effectively subject to, well, very few people. And if the rector said, well, I want to have my brother restore the building, well, no one was going to stop him. Especially not, of course, if the architect was Mr. Charles Hodgson Fowler, who was an extremely accomplished architect. So we'll have a look around the inside, see some of the features. Mr. Fowler, Reverend Mr. Fowler, was very proud there was not a single Victorian feature in his church. So although his brother was a Victorian architect and he was a Victorian parson, he didn't want the building to feel Victorian. And on the whole, it doesn't. I mean, Obviously, it was restored in the Victorian era. There are some accidental Victorian things. There's one very definite Victorian thing that you'll see in a minute. So let's have a look around, shall we? As usual, then, we start at the West End, and you can see we've got this nice, simple Norman nave, and then a slightly later, probably, chancel, and the 14th century Lady Chapel off on the south side. And here we have the obviously Victorian. It's Queen Victoria. So we have a portrait of Queen Victoria and a portrait of the late Queen Elizabeth II. Just the last two queens regnant. No sign of any of the monarchs who came between, but that's all right. These nice Norman windows, late Norman, you can see the pointy tops, but nice Norman splay there, and harmonium. The font is Norman, it has been recut at some point, that's all right. And Lady Chapel through there. Um, another nice 17th century pool, but this is um, known to be from the 1630s because it's got a date on it. It's not on its original base, but it does have its original tester canopy above. Another nice Norman window there. And then here we have a, a later window, 15th century, being, it's been inserted to get a bit more light in here. The Lady Chapel. And we'll have a look, close look in there on the way down from the chancel. But here we have this really lovely pulpit. I mean, look at that carving. Um, and the tester up there above. In the chancel, the choir stalls are deliberately sort of 17th century style. Again, because Mr. Fowler did not want something that just looked Victorian. And his brother gave him what he wanted. Memorial here to William Hancock Roberts, D.D., 30 years rector of this parish, faithful in the performance of his duties as pastor, husband, father, and magistrate for the county of Worcester. He died 10th of October, A.D., 1814, aged 70 years. Also, Sarah, wife of the above, and she died in 1811, aged 66. And there you can see the war memorial by the pulpit. Looking west, you can see you've got a gallery there. It's really just a ringer's gallery, although it would have been used, I expect, back in the day for the choir. Underneath, you've got the, you can see that screen is modern, and that's the necessary facilities. There's a small kitchen down there, 
and the toilet. So back into the chancel here, we have memorial here to Henry Roberts of Droitwich and Sarah Roberts, Edward Roberts, their son, Dorothy Roberts, eldest daughter, Sarah Roberts, second daughter, only surviving child. And you can see how you've got, a, I say it's an only surviving child, it's because she died aged um, 85 and her older sister died aged 82. Uh, <laughs> but uh, aged their brother, he was only only 37. Well, they do say women tend to live longer than men for various reasons. Some nice medieval tiles here on the floor, and memorial here, this little little brass plaque to Robert Rodney Fowler, 1829 to 1914, rector here, 1864 to 1914, and Charles Hodgson Fowler, um, 1840 to 1910 architect of the restoration of this church. So his older brother was a successful architect, so why not? So his younger brother was a successful architect, so why not? Um, and then you've got uh, Hubert Rodney Ross Fowle, 1867-1944, who's the son of Surgeon Major. Some surviving medieval glass here in this little Norman window. You can see the head of a monk in there. And you can see there's no, no room screen. There would have been a screen here in the middle, in, Certainly in the late Middle Ages, there'd have been a screen across. Um, it's interesting there's no chancel arch. And in here we have the piscina, trefoil head piscina, typical 13th century. Um, although these windows tell us, suggest that the chancel and the nave are the piece. We have here a nice um, stained glass window. Um, scenes of the life of Christ. We've got the Annunciation, the Nativity, the Baptism, the Wedding Feast at Cana, and then we've got the Agony in the Garden, It is Finished, the Crucifixion, the Resurrection, and Christ appearing to Mary in the Garden. This panelling here is from the old box pews that were taken down in the um, 1880s Restoration replace you can see with these benches now into the lady chapel and the lady chapel you can see now houses the organ the organ looks more modern than it is the the case is fairly modern but some of the inside well, originally it originates apparently as an organ built by um, Bryson brothers and Morton in 1874 but it's rebuilt by Trevor Tipple and Peter Hughes of Worcester in 1978, so that explains its appearance. Back here we have a memorial to uh, Donald Francis uh, O'Callaghan Brody, Lieutenant Royal Navy, the dearly beloved son of Flora and Edgar Brody, Broadwell's Court, who died for his country in action on the North Sea, um, 3rd of November 1914. And this is looking east. It's, you note know that the big house here is called the Court. Um, it is notable the names that English big houses have. In, in this part of the world, this part of Britain, this part of England, the big house tends to be called the Court because that's where the, historically the Lord of the Manor would have his manorial court. Elsewhere you'll find it called the Manor or the Hall. And it's very largely simply a matter of area where you are. There we are, looking back towards the north door. You can see the curtain there to keep the giraffes out, because giraffes there certainly are. So that is inside here at Broadwas, I think. Uh, just one more thing, actually. At the back, we have some old seating. You see here, this is Victorian seating. Um, but back here, we have some medieval seating. So you've got this bar across here, and these very, very chunky, very chunky bench ends here. Very simple, late medieval seating. 
So that is the inside here at Broadwell St. Mary Magdalene. And so now we're outside at Broadwell, so we can hear the, the birds singing. You see behind me the Lady Chapel, 14th century. Really good piece of stonework there. Lovely structure. This nice local pinkish stone adds to the effect. There's quite decent sandstone around here. It's in, in the lower Team Valley. There's so many beautiful churches in the Team Valley. It's a beautiful part of Worcestershire, in fact. So we'll have a look around the outside and note some of the notable features here. So let's go. And so we start with the churchyard cross. You can see the base here is 14th century and then the top is later. The base is interesting, it's covered over with moss now, but you've got this niche here, and this is a feature that's very, very rare, except in Worcestershire and Herefordshire, where there's quite a lot of churchyard crosses like this. There's a, a couple of possibilities. One is that it was used for an external display of the sacrament in a, a pix, a box, um, and on special occasions. The other is that you put a candle in there, again on special occasions. It's a wonderful set of, lot of moss on there and lichen. Um, really doing its bit for local biodiversity. So there's the Lady Chapel. You can see these beautiful ashlar stonework here. Compare and contrast the Norman stonework in the nave. Yes, some of that's that, that window there is clear 19th century, but most of the stonework there is Norman. And it's much uh, smaller stone, and a little bit rougher than this really high quality masonry here. I mean, whoever's behind this is really got a lot, a lot of money going on. Um, and there is the little wooden belfry, very typical again of Worcestershire. But yes, you have towers, but and towers here, and it's the same in other parts of the country as well. Towers are often later. And there's the east end of the Lady Chapel. Again, the windows, uh, the east window here in the chancel is Victorian. It's part of uh, the Hodgson Fowler re uh, restoration, signed off on, of course, by his uh, older brother. So, you know, if, if your younger brother, if your little brother is an architect, and you need an architect, as I said, that's a great idea. And what it means is we get this structure where we know that the rector has an awful lot of input. So there we have the nave there on the north side. And again this rather, I mean he's, he's not rough, but this uh, rougher stonework and different coloured stones which have not been used to produce any sort of uniform polychrome effect, just this rather interesting random white stones in among the red. And there's this patch here, which is clearly a restoration of some kind. I yeah, do wonder if that's where the brood stair was. And the patch here, you can see that that's the join between the nave and the chancel. North door. The north door was known as the Devil's Door. Um, that's be the old rectory over there, I expect. Um, might be the court, but I think it's the old rectory. Um, the, known as the Devil's Door, it's opened it baptisms, part of the medieval baptism and exorcism. The idea was that uh, small tr that uh, unbaptized children had demons in them and they'd need a door to get out of. A nice tall lance up there, late Norman. Um, and here's been a little bit of modern restoration work, and you can see there the um, clear, cleaner stone. But you know, sandstone does this, sandstone erodes, it's quite a soft stone. And then we've got these little lancets at the east end. So that is around back to the south side. There's a, a hedge behind me so I can't get any further back. And because of Lady Chapel, what happens here is that the south side is the 
porch is in the angle between the nave and the chapel and there's that obviously as it stands at the moment that is going to be Norman Fowler but um, Conscious Fowler this here is uh, a bit um, the porch again is Hodgson Fowler as it stands at the moment but there would have been a belfry like that before so we go back round to the porch because we have a look in and see the, the doorway and again this really nice stone well the other thing here is you've got this this is where arrows arrowheads have been sharpened because back in the day they did archery practice in the churchyard or near the churchyard and the idea was that if the king or your feudal lord needed people to, to fight then you'd have some um, military training the doorway here is uh, early 13th century perhaps and very fine carving and it was protected by the porch here and there we have the roll of honour for those who served in the First World War. That's those who served, not just those who were killed. So that is Broadwas St Mary Magdalene. So there we have it, St Mary Magdalene. Beautiful 14th century chapel in this lovely Norman church behind. Well thank you for watching and may God bless you and keep you until next time.